Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Place of Binding of Isaac Edward Plus. We're never gonna get a start as strong, or we can at least never hope for or plan for a start as strong as the start that we had in our last run, but we can hope to have a good time. 9x6392LF. It's a new day. Okay, well, uh, goodbye, deal with the devil in all likelihood. Nobody to blame but myself. Hello, darkness, my old friend. MP3, etc., etc. <laughs> this guy doesn't even listen to his music in Og Vorbis. <laughs> Bro, you haven't lived until you've heard Dance Gavin Dance and Lossless Flack. If that describes you to a T, maybe stop and take a second just to consider that. I'm not saying you can't enjoy that music, but can we all laugh about it together? We have fun here. Anyway, um. Yeah, that last run is never gonna, you know, you can never hope for a run that starts as good as that run got. Uh, but what you can hope for is having a fun time, and a good time was had by all. It's gonna seem suspicious there, but I actually deliberately took that damage. We've already ruined our deal with the devil chance, uh, or ruined it as much as we can. We might as well take advantage of the fact that we got five extra damage, or we, we have five damage total now. Alright, well, you know, it's not like I wanted to do that room anyway. So, sure, go ahead, just take the key. Why do I even pick up Key Beggar at this point in my life? That's very nice, SMB super fan. Um, mostly for the, the tiers and I guess a little bit for the speed upgrade as well. We don't want Karma, I'm happy with where we're at. It's a new day, had a nice dinner last night with uh, Kate's parents for Kate's mom's birthday. For anybody, uh, you know, it's, it's a prickly bit, but I gotta get into it. Kate's parents are Korean. They were born in Korea. Um, hold on. Just thinking about those beans. There we go. Um, so they speak uh, English, but they prefer to speak Korean. You know, their English is not particularly strong, although we can understand each other. But when they're out, you know, it's uh, you know Kate's mom's birthday. I'm the only uh, non-Korean speaker there. I don't want to be like, hey, 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 hey. Can you speak English so I can be part of the conversation? You know, everybody's having uh, a good time, enjoying themselves. I don't want to make them feel like they're in a language class or something like that. But it does mean, like... I'm just pouring one out and having sympathy for all the people out there. Oh my god, my HP. Honestly, I don't think we want them. I just got sympathy out there for all my uh, Hulkamaniacs out there. That have in-laws who don't speak the same language as them, and thus spend a lot of every dinner either looking at their phone or, you know, I, looking at who is talking, and then when everybody else laughs, you laugh a little bit, but not so much as to draw, you know, you're laughing because people are laughing, obviously you're not laughing at the joke, but if you laugh like a lot, people are going to be like, why are you pretending like you understand what's happening? It's a whole thing. Anyway, hold on. I have a message on the old Discord. Let me see. Daniel. Yes, it is. Please join us. There you go. It's just that easy. Um, and again, it's not like I'm an adult. Sitting quietly at a dinner is... Uh, goodbye. 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 It's, uh, it's well within my wheelhouse. In fact, it's nice to not even have to... You know, I don't want to act like I carry every conversation that I'm in, because I don't believe that that's true, but it's nice to not even have to participate in a conversation from time to time, you know? To just be able to sit there and eat, but it is weird sometimes, because, like, I've been, you know, trained to believe that it's bad manners to, like, be on your phone at dinner, and I think it is, but can we draw an exception for when, you know, literally you don't speak the language being spoken at the table? That's kind of how I feel about it. <laughs> like, I, I feel awkward being on my phone as well, but I also feel awkward just looking at everybody as they speak without knowing what they're saying, except occasionally I'll hear, like, something, 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 Chomgi Room. And I'm like, oh, they're talking about the Gomai, because it has Chomgi Room in it, a.k.a. sesame oil. You get the idea. I'm just saying, okay? By the way, all the 10-year-olds watching the video, why don't you just learn Korean? You know, it's not like when I finish the Isaac episode, I just sit on my butt and do nothing. Well, I mean, mostly I've been doing that since Smash Bros. came out, but come on, bro. It's an eSport. Look it up. You know, I, I got other things on the go. I, you know, I mean this with no disrespect to Kate's parents, of course, but to learn a language just to 
converse with them at dinner once every uh, couple of months is kind of an impractical skill to add to the repertoire, okay? I, I'm content with where our existing relationship is at, you know, we can... We say hello, we say, uh, you know, nice to see you. I mean, we went to uh, Korea with Kate's dad to see the Olympics. It's not like we have a bad familial relationship. It's, we're not getting too into advanced ideas during our conversations. You know, like when they speak Korean to me, I'm like, Kwa Jong Shil Odie Yo, Ha 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 Kinchana Yo. And uh, that's a joke for the Korean people out there only. Here's another one, for Korean speakers at least. What's a vampire's favorite type of drink? Kopi. Means nose blood. Look it up, sweetheart. Anyway. I'm just saying, it was a riveting conversation from my standpoint, but it might have been. It's my loss, I suppose. Um, I'll take the pill. This this run is weird so far. We've only had, to the best of my m memories, we've only had one spirit heart. I'll take it. Uh, to use as protection for uh, deal with the devil, deal with the angel, uh, context. So I'm not really disappointed that we haven't been able to make them work, but I will say if you look at the track record we've had over maybe the past 15 or 20 days, we've been missing more deals with the devil on the first and second floor, or, or taking damage in those positions more than we should. Uh, and, you know, this specific run I don't think is that big of a deal, but I do think you have to look at those data points and go like, okay, where are we going wrong, and how can we, you know, reconfigure the way we're approaching this to be better. So I don't anticipate uh, defeating... Or getting a deal with the angel here, I should say. The run's going real quick-like, thanks to these XL floors. It's got me a little tilted. Because I really, I mean, as Samson, I want to get an arcade. Like, I have a run strategy in head. This is why I took Infestation. Uh, or uh, Fishtail, I should say. It does, like, quite literally, basically nothing for us, right? Okay, now it immediately makes Guppy's head twice as good. <laughs> I'm saving my money, though, because I want to, uh, I want to make sure we have enough money to get an arcade in the future. Because if we can get, uh, like an infestation or something like that, uh, double our fly output. I mean, to be honest, now that I think about it, that's probably not that necessary anymore. Just carrying this trinket in the hopes that we got something that worked out for us has actually worked out for us. Who would have thought? So, so far, so good. And, I mean, of course, I would be over the moon if we beat the odds here. We did not beat the odds. We're at six minutes. <laughs> no XL floor, please. Oh, my God. Okay. So, you might have said on the last floor, hey, why are you saving your money? That's stupid. You know, you're going to get one more floor before the uh, fight anyway. Nah, 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 nah. Or before the, the next chance to get an arcade anyway. Turns out that is not the case. This is an XL floor-driven run, and uh, that's okay. It, it means that we're, we're destined for quickness today, one way or the other. We only got one shot at this arcade. Even if it's not IV bag, um, we still want to play the Blood Bank just to get the raw damage bonus. And uh, that one is pretty much 100% on me. I took some damage for no reason. And you know what? Hit me again. Hit me again. Hit me one more time. Okay. Uh, I figure, you know, I, well, okay, well, well, one more time, you know. I figure, um, if we're gonna get hit once, you know, we got HP, we might as well kind of leverage our, our HP to get as much bonus damage as we can, and then our flies are just gonna be unbelievably good as a result of all this terrible damage we deliberately took. So we're getting carried, um, and I, I'm not afraid to call it like I see it in this case. <laughs> we have gotten some staggeringly great uh, items and synergies on a run in which we're probably playing like a 5 out of 10. And I'm talking like a like a middle school 5. Like, they, wa they don't want to give you a 5. They want you out of their classroom, but... We have 19.64 damage, which means we actually have like 10 damage total, but still. We'll fight our first boss. I'm hoping we can beat the odds and get a deal with the angel still, but we, we got a lot of work left to do on this floor. It might seem like we're rushing. Um, that's that's mostly a product of our good damage plus our XL floor situations here. And the odds of getting three XL floors in a row are, are pretty minuscule. 
But we're going to go back now and... Uh, yeah, like an 18% chance of a deal with the Angel. That's not bad. And uh, to, uh, truth be told, uh, just because we skipped one deal with the Devil, we shouldn't be fixated on deals with the Angel. I mean, we have 8 HP because the game has been so unbelievably merciful. I'm happy that, you know, the game is being very kind to us now. I'm not saying, uh, you know, it was unkind to us recently. We've had pretty much just been rolling. I mean, the fact that even though we lost on that last Keeper run, the fact that it had the chance to get to where it was going is indicative of the fact the game's beating us halfway. Or more. Those keys belong to me. The key is mine. I'm sorry that you seem to be con Okay, you get the idea. It's a uh, pop music from the 1990s. That's on the Now That I Call Music uh, CD that I actually own. I did want to give a big congratulations. We've talked about Now That's What I Call Music a few times in the recent past. They recently hit a major milestone and hit Now That's What I Call Music 69. Um, you know, there were those who said it couldn't be done, and here they are. 13 years later, having released nine CDs a week, to get to that vaunted number. Hey, they hit it faster than uh, Square Enix got there with Final Fantasy. You know, I remember as a kid in like the year 2003, I'd be reading uh, official PlayStation magazine. Yeah, that's right. I had a subscription to the Demo Disc magazine. I was living it up. That's the suburban lifestyle. Little disposable income. 35 bucks a year for journalism. It's called the Washington Post. Look it up, sweetheart. Anyway... Sure, I'll take this. We got the speed to burn. Um, they were like, man, in like 2020, it's going to be so wild. Square Enix, what are they going to do when they hit Final Fantasy 30? Because for those of you who are not in the know, Just you know, what's 30 in Roman numerals is XXX. Surely they can't call the game Final Fantasy XXX. That would just be ridiculous. So, uh, so, I'm not going to say it was like a major event, but there's all this speculation. Like, what are they going to do? Are they going to call it just 3-0? Are they going to call it like... And it turns out, like, all the ink that was spilled over that, you know. I just picture, you know, people in the official PlayStation Magazine newsroom being like, you, Joe, Joe, do you got that story about what do you think is going to happen to Final Fantasy Triple X yet? Why, these, like, sleepless nights. You, you know, he, he's not... He, he's so under pressure from the deadlines, he's like, uh, you know, being snappy with his kids. And he, later he's like, I'm sorry, you didn't deserve that. It's, I'm just stressed out from work. And then, you know... Turns out, you know, if we could just go back in time and tell old Joseph that, you know, they're, on, they're still on 16 in the year 2019. I'm sure he'd sleep a little bit easier. Realize the absurdity of the whole situation. After all that, no arcade. Not that I'm too upset, but you get the idea. Anyway. I mean, it was different back then. We were also like, oh my god, what Tony Hawk will they be on then? Tony Hawk 100? I will say... I, I, can I... I had to hit you with something. Where is the Final Fantasy VII Remake? You know, I'm not this guy. You know, I don't, uh... I don't take pleasure in being like, Project! Late! Overdue! What are they doing? Etc, etc. That's not, that's not who I am. But at some point, when the remake of a video game has been in production for like a decade, and nobody even knows where it's at, there hasn't even been like footage of it for three years, you start to ask questions like, what, what the heck's going on? Let me, and again, when it comes to, what's the famous Shigeru Miyamoto quote? Is like, a delayed game is eventually good, a bad game is bad forever. Of course, everybody agrees with this. You're not, it's not galaxy brain to suggest that. I'm not saying, I want it now! Like, I'm just asking, what's taking so long? In the time since the announcement, uh, and this is just to put it in perspective, in the time since the announcement of the remake of Final Fantasy VII, Square Enix, uh, sorry, Capcom, announced released Resident Evil 7, which necessitated the development of a brand new engine. The reception to Resident Evil 7 was positive enough. Capcom said, okay, we're going to remake Resident Evil 2 in this new engine. That released three weeks ago. 
So there have been like two full development cycles. And I get, by the way, is it easier to remake Resident Evil 2 than it is to remake Final Fantasy 7? You're gonna think that this is a little bit of a strange sentiment. I don't want any of those, unfortunately. Oh, well, there's more. Still don't want any of those. Uh, not at this cost, anyway. But I think the answer is probably... Like, the script is a, a lot of an RPG, of course, but and that's already, you know, they've... I'm not saying they're gonna word for word take uh, Final Fantasy VII script, but probably, close to it at least. But you gotta remember, in Final Fantasy VII, you know... First off, I heard they re they're redesigning like the battle system from the ground up to not just be um, like ATB style turn-based battles anymore. Like it's going to be real-time combat of some variety. Anyway, again, this is you know the details are spotty because there's it's not been that much press on it recently. But um, sure, I understand it takes time. You know, Resident Evil Two also had to go from a, a fixed camera to a free camera on top of everything else. Now, Final Fantasy VII on PlayStation 1, all the backgrounds were essentially hand-drawn, uh, I don't want to say JPEGs, but you kind of get what I mean, right? So that's not really like the way that you can... It's, it's not commonly done anymore as a way to design worlds, I guess, is just to have like a static image in the background, you know, especially uh, nowadays, it's much more like, hey, you know, as much as people make fun of, like, Todd Howard, it's like, hey, you know, you see that mountain, you can climb it. It's not just like a, it's not a static image just hanging out in the background. So there's a lot of work to be done there, I'm sure. Dude, this is such a weird run. Like, we can't get a deal with the angel to save our lives, but we also cannot be killed. And I'm not one of those guys, and you should know this by now, if you've been following for a while. I'm not one of those guys who's like, well, they announced it at E3 last year, and it's not out yet. What's up with that? You know, I watch some other E3 streams, and oftentimes, like, a game will pop up, and it's very clearly, like, work in progress, like, not in-engine cutscenes and stuff like that. And I see Twitch chat. Twitch chat's like, December? <laughs> Is this coming out in six months? Yeah, we made two years in six months, maybe, if we're lucky. Um, it takes time, I understand. But I'm also like, you know, what's taking so long? It's it's not that I'm saying the game should be done already. It's more like, how's it going? And also, you know, you've been working on it for like six years. And I say this as, a, I know this is a company that, you know, they, I mean, Kate was telling me the Kingdom Hearts saga. Where basically like, you know, a year or two after Kingdom Hearts 2 came out, uh... Sony and Square Enix did a press conference where they showed off, like, Kingdom Hearts 3 concept footage on the PlayStation 3. And everyone went, ooh, a new Kingdom Hearts on PlayStation 3. That was uh, 13 or 14 years ago. That version of the game never came out. And the PlayStation 3 uh, lifespan was essentially, like, along with the 360, you know, in the, the Wii, it was the, one of the cohorts for having, like, the longest console lifespan in history. So... I just, I, I'm, and, you know, again, good game is good forever, or delayed game is good eventually, I should say, and Kingdom Hearts 3 is getting really, really good press, not necessarily my scene, but who cares, you know, not everything has to be for everybody, um, but I also, I do still find myself being like, what took so long on that one, what, you guys need, like, a new, maybe you got some secrets going on that I'm not privy to that, that makes this take forever, but eventually be good, but simultaneously, you need some new project managers? Because, like, it just seems like, you know, I get it, games take a, a long time to come out, but, like, this is, like, a really long time, consistently. Okay, well, finally, it deal with the devil. All right. I like, since the release, or since the announcement of Kingdom Hearts 3, like, studios have announced their existence, risen... Let's say Kingdom Hearts 3. I mean Final Fantasy 7 uh, Remake. Studios have uh, come into existence, released a game, had it be successful, release a follow-up, have it be less successful, and then dissolved. So, like, you know, and that's like Bumbo Soccer, you know, as Dan would say. It's not a triple-A game with a ton of expectations and, uh, you know, probably hundreds of millions of dollars riding on the production side, but... 
simultaneously. It just it puts it into perspective, I guess is what I'm trying to say. This is taking a long time. I don't know if anyone else is privy to more information on that outside of the Square Corporation themselves. I'm not hating on Square. Square's released some very good stuff. You know, again, Kingdom Hearts is not my scene. Um, Sleeping Dogs. I was going to say a few years ago. I guess it's like six years ago now, but still. Um, the Tomb Raider series. They, the Tomb Raider games keep coming out, you know, once every two or three years. And they're, like, uniformly quite good or even great, depending on what you're looking for. I like them. Um... So that's impressive. It's just like the it's the RPG properties that get stuck in I don't know some kind of development miasma. And I'm not privy to that side of that. I'm just bringing it. It's just interesting to me. I'm not necessarily shaming the company for working slowly. In the end, who cares? Like you know, it's you know how long it took between Mad Max movies. Fury Road came out. It ruled. In hindsight, you know, how many people are like, oh, I wish Fury Road came out four years earlier. Who cares, you know? When you get the movie, is good, but... It's just surprising, is all I'm saying. I also, I gotta talk a little bit. If this is gonna be a gamer episode, I gotta talk a little bit about cynicism, okay? Uh, we have reached, without a doubt, peak Battle Royale cynicism. Which I love because it la allows me to be needlessly contrarian and seem enlightened just for disagreeing. Respawn just announced their new uh, battle royale. It's called Apex Legends. So, you know, as you can tell, if you follow gaming news, we got about a week or so backlog. <laughs> it's going to inhibit my clickbait ability, but... Um, and I was watching the Twitch chat. The Twitch chat was just resident sleeper resident sleeper feels bad not like this resident sleeper not like this feels bad you know it's just constantly people like crapping on the work of respawn now i get it people are sick of brs to some extent for sure but simultaneously this is a respawn you know you gotta cut them a little bit of slack and trust that they're doing good stuff titanfall one well liked titanfall two Beloved. It's become like the Witcher 3 of first-person shooters as far as the internet's concerned. A, a campaign-driven first-person shooter with a real emotional core. Lots of fun stuff happening in that game. The fact that that doesn't buy them the goodwill to get through their announcement video with hidden, without hitting them with a resident sleeper is like... I'm fully confident, like, with The Witcher 4... If they ever announced it on Twitch, it would be all Resident Sleepers. Even with the clout that that game has online. I think it's just something in, in Twitch chat when a AAA studio gives you the chance to give feedback. You hit them with a not like this. I'm not saying all reception of games press should be positive. But there's, like a, there's definitely a handful of studios, I feel at least, out there. Why would I think that this is the boss fight? What, I thought it was a long Isaac? <laughs> I like a chest with a short floor and a long I Anyway. Um, Respawn's gotta be one. I always felt Titanfall 1 was one of the... It got job, dude. The Titanfall 1 is responsible for probably like 5% of cynicism that I have related to the gaming industry. The game was wonderful, unique. Um, mechanically interesting, uh, and the beta was a ton of fun, and then when it came out, you know, it didn't have a campaign, and I, a lot of people were like, it doesn't have a campaign, no campaign, no buy, and I was like, well, it has the potential to be, like, the most revolutionary multiplayer shooter of all time, like, the shell is already built, and it's wonderful, um, I feel like it's specifically the game that a lot of people have asked for, you know, it is meaningful vehicular combat, solid first-person shooter mechanics. Um, but they're like, man, if the robot doesn't make me cry, I'm not going to buy it. So then Titanfall 1 was kind of like a player base ran out relatively quickly. At least the player base of casuals, which is what any game needs to survive because, you know, people like me need somebody to kill and be killed by. Instead of just logging in and getting, you know, destroyed by ex-tribes professionals. Um, Titanfall 2 was like, again, one of the great jobs in video game history. I haven't played it, and I'll, you know, because 
the reception of Titanfall 1, to some extent, left kind of a bad taste in my mouth. But I watched people play through the campaign. The campaign was lovely. The game was well-respected. didn't sell that well because they released it in competition with, uh, you know, the other AAA franchises in the holiday season. It kind of, like, stopped it before it even had a chance to take off. So, I think Respawn deserves credit. Dude, this run ended before I could even do anything. It was a fun run. Very fast. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. And I will see you next time. See you.